Oh my gosh, I got back from Chicago, Illinois, and look what I had sitting on my porch. I'm so excited. Guys, another box from Relink Medical. I don't really know what's in it, but let's go ahead and let's open the box, and then when we do, let's go ahead and tear it apart. Whatever it is. <laughs> let's, let's do this. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. All right, guys, let's do this right now. Relink Medical, thank you so much for sending me another mystery box. This feels kind of dense, feels kind of heavy. So let's see what's in it. All right. All right, we got the paper. Okay. Judging by the oh my gosh, this thing's dense. Whatever it is, this guy is a little hefty guy. Let's see, nothing else in the box. I'm gonna place it down. Oh, feels like a patient monitor. There we go. Okay. What have we got here? Oh yes, okay. <clears throat> this looks like a GE monitor. Yes. All right. Wow, that was wrapped really good. Oh boy, here, let me get the tape so I can get this display off. This protector. Cool idea that they put that protector on there. All right, it's the dash. The dash monitor. Heck yeah. All right, so dash is a uh, interesting little monitor. This one does have one battery that came with it. Very cool. It's got the printer option. Very nice. Uh, it does have a dual battery setup, so this is normally used as a transport monitor. You can also see that it's got a um, GCX style mount plate. So this guy was probably mounted on a bedside someplace like that. All right, let's see, what do we have? We have uh, CO2 monitoring, very cool. Um, so this one here would be a, um, what would it be, a mainstream CO2 sensor, I think, on this one. We've got uh, two arterial blood pressures. We've got uh, SpO2. We've got temperature and or uh, cardiac output. And I've got uh, ECG. And it says isolate ECG. And we have uh, non-invasive blood pressure. Very cool. All right, let's tell you what we're going to do, just because I'm so excited. Let's go ahead and tear it up. Let's open it up. Let's see what's inside. I've never torn open a dash. So, I've never opened a dash monitor before that I, that I remember. I mean, I've been a biomed for a long time. So, up here, if I remember correctly, you can see that there is a spot for something and there is a light diffuser up here and an LED, if I remember correctly, and it codes the monitor. So if you have a critical code or something, it will highlight a different color at the top. So it'll be like blue or red or amber, and it should be right here. That's missing, but that's okay. That is no problem. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and pull this handle off since the handle's already, obviously, Got an issue. <clears throat> All right, oh, there it is. All right, handle comes off nice and easy. Little connector. All right, and let's see. I can tell based on the case, like I said with the other one that I took apart, the MP50. 
Um, anytime you have a case that looks like it's a radiator or a heat diffuser, that means that the power supply is going to be probably right back here in the back of this guy. It is an uh, integrated power supply, so it's probably right here in the corner. I can see it also has a voltage selector, so it'll be either 1 amp at 240 volts or it can pull 2 amps at 120 volts. Good stuff. Let's go ahead and pull the GCX plate off. pull the front bezel off this guy I think I already did some of it which is the, the handle so now there's going to be uh, two middle screws and two bottom screws and we should be able to pull the whole front panel off this guy mind you I've never taken one of these apart before so if I'm wrong we're gonna find out together <laughs> So we got the two, two, two. So now the front bezel is ready to come off, and that should have your display and also your controls. So remember, take this guy off. Let's see. Oh, geez, that's so stupid. Okay, so it's supposed to come off, but you can see what happened. There's a little piece of tape here from when they were protecting the screen. And it should just naturally fall apart like that. There we go. A little piece of printer paper in there. All right. And let's see. We have a ribbon. You can see that there's a ribbon that holds it in there. And I have two Phillips screws. So we should be able to just lay it down kind of like that. Pull these Phillips screws out. And then this whole entire strap will come off of this guy. So these are number one Phillips. So don't use a number two Phillips. I just figured that out right now as I tried using my number two. Didn't work out so well. And I can tell that somebody else has been in this device because this is not the original screw right here. So you kind of expect that when devices get older. Uh, let's see, that should be this strap. Yep, there we go. That holds a very long connector in. And I've got one up here that is being held in by a small clip. So you see how it's got a hole hit through the cable. I'm going to put my screwdriver through it. You can see, hole, hole. Put my screwdriver through that allowed me to get nice even pressure across the whole connector as I pull it out and there is a series of pins on there so now my front is completely disconnected from the back see that you can see the holes that I was just talking about so when I went to pull it out stuck my screwdriver in those holes like so and popped it out nice and easy very well shielded, so I would assume that this comes as a component, this entire front face. Um, I will pull that apart a little bit further because, like I said earlier, one of the things that does go wrong is this little uh, encoder right here. But that's uh, the front panel. All right, let's go ahead and bring the camera in nice and close so I can show you the insides of this machine as I continue to pull it apart. Okay, so from right here, I can see that I've got a couple large fasteners that are holding the guts in this machine. And I have a card down at the bottom, which is probably going to be like an interface card, just because that's also where the batteries are. 
We're going to find out together in just a moment. I have no idea. There we go. Yes. And as I said before, when you're taking something apart, always try and leave the uppermost screws in to the very last. Um, you're going to see that this is a technique I apply all the time and that keeps everything in because if I were to take all these out and leave just the bottom one in, now it could want to fall out, which puts all that weight on one little screw that would be very bad. Okay, so here we go. I do believe that is all my fasteners. Right. All right, so there's one other thing. Um, the interface plate right here, it seems to be conflicting. So I'm gonna pull out this little screw. It's a number one Phillips. Let's pull that guy out. I don't know why, but it does seem like that was my problem. There we go. Okay, that number one Phillips might not even have been necessary. It's all good. Okay, so let's go over this little guy right here. Um, what I seem to have is a tram module. If you guys have seen, I did an MMS module from Philips. This is almost the equivalent of it. Everything that you need is on this entire module, which is super cool. Um, I'm curious, I switched out this module if you're also switching out some of your options. Or does the software on the module have to be upgraded at the same time as the base unit? Adam, I'm not really sure. But guys, uh, that's kind of cool. Right here we have an NIBP. This is probably the Achilles heel of the entire machine, as it is with almost every single patient monitor. The good news is, is that this little pump right here, um, there is a 12 volt and there's a six volt version of this pump. But this pump is a generic style pump. You can find these and you can desolder right here and you can solder in a replacement. Just make sure you get the voltage correctly. And um, this is a Psycho, S-E-I-K-O pump. And I'm gonna assume that this one is the 12 volt version. Yep, there it is. Okay, it's written right here on the pink label, 12 volt. But I do know that there are two different ones. So be careful when you're ordering replacement pumps. You can find them all the time on other patient monitors and it's the exact same pump. You can find this part on Welsh Allens, you can find this part on GEs. If you have spare parts laying around, if you ever have something wrong with this, let's say a cra cracked face or something, save this because the solenoids and this pump are probably still gonna be good and you can repair a unit just by throwing in this pump right here, put the hose on, you're ready to rock and roll. It really is that simple. So, and because this is not a calibrated part, your uh, voltage differential for your uh, pressure sensor is actually what's calibrated. You're not gonna have to do a real in-depth calibration. The pump just pumps up according to what the pressure sensor senses. So um, this part right here, guys, two zip ties, clip, clip, desolder, two pins, and uh, take the hose off. And you can change out that NIBP pump. Very cool. So uh, the other options, like I already said, it, it does have uh, carbon dioxide. Um, we, we do have the two arterial pressures and in, invasive. We've got SpO2, um, we've got the temperature and cardiac output, you know, NIBP and isolated ECG. Uh, I'm, right now I'm just taking a look at it because I would like to take the shield off and I think Oh yes, all right, let's do it. Let's take the shield off. Let's take a look at the electronics inside this module. That's what I'm talking about. I thought it was spot welded on the outside and I wasn't gonna be able to open it up. Not true, not true at all. Take a look. Okay, I, I do have one cable right here. All right, so that's for the NIDP pump. Go ahead and pull the NIBP pump. Let's see, I've got what, 
three screws holding it down, four. All right, so the only hose that I got disconnect is from one of the solenoids and the whole entire module comes out. You could replace the entire module if you want, but remember um, the calibration values are based on the analog to digital or the analog signal that you're going to get from your pressure sensor. So you change the pressure sensor, they're going to have different tolerances and you're going to have to do a full recalibration. So I try and keep the pressure sensor with the unit if I ever have an NIBP issue. We've got uh, two solenoids. So one of these solenoids is probably going to be a quick release and the other is going to be a slow release. The quick release is going to be for uh, emergency overpressure and stuff like that. And the slow release solenoid is usually going to be for when you're just slowly letting out click, click, click. A little bit of pressure because that's how NIBP works. It's going to overpressure uh, to the point where it's going to occlude all your blood vessels and it's going to slowly release pressure until it senses a pulsing in the air pressure. So when it senses the, the pulsing, that's how it calculates the systolic and diastolic pressures. So uh, systolic is going to be your total cutoff pressure. So when you, a normal adult, 120 over 80, um, and a high blood pressure is considered like 150 over like 90 or something like that. But the high number is your systolic over your diastolic. So your systolic is going to be total occlusion pressure. So the higher your blood pressure, the more your blood's going to pump through those veins and it's going to take higher and higher pressure to occlude it and your uh, distolic is going to be when uh, it no longer senses the pulsing of the pressure because that means that it's no longer occluding at all, you know, not even partially. So as soon as it quits sensing the pulsing, now it gets your diastolic and you're good. So um, that's your NIBP in a nutshell. It's very maintainable and that is the one component that breaks the most often is that roller pump. Okay, how do we open this guy? Let's see. I want to do this the right way. I got some shielding. So these are like RF shields. And uh, like I've said in other videos, your shields are there because it's a measurement instrument. So what you're often taking is, many of these are gonna be analog signals and you're converting them over to a digital signal which can be displayed and processed on your computer. So the computer is here. Your measurement is going to be in this box. All right, so those are going to be like a Faraday cage or a RF shield. There you go. And this is just a protective shield. Very cool. Okay. Um, so again, Anytime you see more shielding, that means that there's measurement instruments underneath that shielding. And let's see, how am I gonna pull this guy out? Like this. Okay, so this is just a uh, riser card on a bunch of pins. And there we go. Sorry if it seems like I'm being brutal on this. I'm just uh, unplugging stuff as I go. And no, I'm trapped by the ECG. I don't really want to pull it off. But anyway, uh, let's see what we have here. Um, now, just like I showed in some of my other videos, anytime you have capacitors and inductors, you've got power phases, okay? So uh, you're also going to notice that there's going to be a separation between where the patient comes in and everything else. So usually the separation is along transformers. Um, we don't know what's under these, but there's normally an isolation between the, the patient and the, the mains and the electronics. And it looks like that separation is going to be under these shields. I don't know if I can get those off. No, it looks like it's spot welded. Anyway, you guys will just have to imagine. <laughs> So I do have a pressure transducer right here. That's for the uh, NIBP. So I've got two different pressures that are being measured. 
One of them is right here on the NIBP card, and then one that's right here on the measurement card. Very cool. Um, as I was saying earlier, I, I, sorry guys, I get this so sidetracked. Uh, anytime you have inductors next to capacitors, it's going to be a power phase. So right here, you can see that there is going to be, uh, I, I can tell you there's a line of isolation right here. Right down this transformer, these right here are probably uh, opto-isolators. And this component right here is usually meant for isolation as well. So you can imagine a line of isolation right here between uh, the electronic side and the patient side. And right here, look at this. It's funny, you can see the same type of isolation right here between this chip, this transformer is, is basically an isolation transformer. We've got one capacitor and then you've got some other what are probably opto isolators. So the same components here are right here. So that separates this board from this board and this separates the measurement from the patient. Right? So there's definitely lines of isolation. Um, anytime you see transformers next to capacitors, it's going to be a power phase. So right here, there is going to be uh, incoming power and it's immediately going into some smoothing capacitors. And from here, uh, it's already probably got one power phase for the processors. See, I got one processor up here and one down here. Um, this transformer right here separates this board from that board, um, but it also creates another power phase for your CPU and for your measurement. Not that it would really matter because this whole entire component is going to be changed out together, but you should, guys should at least just be aware of what's going on inside your devices. So uh, technically you could repair or replace part of one of these boards if you really wanted to. But from there, you're going to have to do a full recalibration and stuff. What a pain in the butt. But um, anytime you have these electrolytic capacitors, you have possible failure points. Electrolytic capacitors have a crown at the very top, which will bulge and leak. They do have a shelf life and a life expectancy. So these components right here that are responsible for making sure that your power is as filtered as possible, well, these components are also high likelihood for failure. So I do have a couple more up here, but uh, just remember that if this device ever doesn't work right, check your capacitors. And if anything, maybe just replace them. So that's in the module. We got some more components. Look at all this good stuff. All right, got all these fasteners here. Oh boy. Okay, let's take a look at the magic inside the machine. I have a CPU board for sure, and I've got a power board on the back. And the power board, I can see the power coming in. Let's see if I can uh, show it to you guys a little bit better. So we've got AC mains in uh, right back here. There we go. So we got AC mains coming in, and uh, right over here is your bridge rectifier, which is going to uh, change it into DC. And from there, it's going to get switched at a high rate. Um, I do see uh, a circle fuse next to AC mains. Anyway, it's going to get switched, and then it's going to go through a transformer. Boop, boop. A big old transformer right here. It's kind of hard to see. Wish I had a flashlight. Um, so the power comes in, gets switched, goes through the transformer, because only AC power can go through a transformer. And from here, it's going to go ahead and get rectified back to DC. So high voltage DC, it's probably a step down transformer and it's going to go to uh, rectified to a low voltage DC and then near the power output, there is always going to be some sort of filter capacitors. And I can see one right here. Um, I can also see the same separation between the output side and the input side right here. There's a little cut in the board and there's a couple of uh, feedback for uh, voltage correction, uh, power factor correction, they call it. Again, guys, whenever you have power coming into a board, there's almost always gonna be some sort of fusing and you're also going to separate out into your different voltage rails. Now, since this one here, it does have components and it also has a CPU. So you have a um, 
you have one power rail for, for use um, with larger components like the printer, and then you're gonna have a power rail for the CPU. The CPU is normally gonna take about three volts. So it can be one and a half to three volts. It depends on what device you're working with. But the voltage comes in right back here on this spot. And then immediately, look what you have. You have a uh, voltage regulator, voltage regulator, and right here is gonna be power rails. See these? So it's gonna separate it out. I do see a coin battery back here. Um, so there's a coin battery on that board and it looks like it is spot welded in. That kind of sucks because that is immediately putting a life expectancy on this board because that is going to be a very big pain to change out. Not impossible, but it's going to be a pain to change out that coin cell. And when you change it out, I bet you, you lose all your settings. And so the other remaining component that I have up here is the printer. So you are going to have a high voltage rail. Uh, which is going to be, um, you know, 12 volts, 6 volts, something like that. That's going to power your major components. Then you're going to have a low voltage rail, which is going to be for CPUs. And um, this bottom black right here is going to be your battery tray. And uh, nothing really major going on there. So in the back, just a power supply, CPU board with also, you know, some voltage regulation. Um, these capacitors here look really good. So uh, I bet you if I were to just clean this guy out and put it back together, it's probably going to work absolutely fine. But anyway, guys, that was a uh, quick rundown on the uh, GI. Oh, man. I know I didn't uh, show you guys inside the, the dash display, but that's okay. Uh, it's just going to be um, probably a touch panel. I don't know if this one's a touch panel or not. Doesn't really feel like it. Um, it's going to obviously have a button rail right here. It's going to be back here. And there's going to be some extra shielding in there. But um, I'm, I'm not really going to tear that apart because that's probably unnecessary. It's probably changed out as a uh, uh, field replaceable unit, FRU. But uh, anyway, guys, that's the Dash 3000. I want to thank the, the folks over at Relink Medical. If it wasn't for them sending me devices like this to tear apart and just get to the nitty gritty on, I wouldn't have the content for you guys. So thanks Relink Medical. Thank you very much for supporting channels like mine and the mission of education for all of us, including for myself. Never tore one of these apart. <laughs> thanks for watching guys.